Hey, welcome everybody. Chris Petrie here. Thanks for coming by. We're going to have a wonderful time. We're going to do a beautiful farmhouse scene here. This is out in the uh, Lancaster, uh, Pennsylvania area of the United States. Um, I go out here on vacation all the time. Farmlands, beautiful country houses, farmhouses, farm fields, just oodles of interesting uh, landscapes to paint. This here is just a simple painting. We're going to use just sepia tone. So you can see here I'm using just the Windsor Newton sepia tone paint. That's all we're going to use, one color. And we're going to paint this and draw and paint this beautiful scene here. And you can see that uh, you get a beautiful effect with this. You practice basically your, uh, your vision. You're, you're focusing in on your vision of darks and lights. So when you do this type of painting, you're you're focusing in on the darks and lights of things. See how this roof is really dark. Some of these trees are really dark. The sky is lighter. The road here is a little lighter. The farm fields here are medium tones and dark tones mixed together. So you'll see all these things as we work. So join along here on this video and this is something you can work right from this picture right here. I'll move this out of the way. And we'll see if we can zoom in a little bit. This way you can zoom in and work right from this painting. I'll zoom out a little bit so we can get that. There we go. Perfect. So you can work right from this. You can draw and paint right from this. And then you can watch the video full through and then come back to the beginning and stop here. Or of course you can just stop on the end of the video and you'll see that at the end of the video we're gonna we zoom in on this same scene here too as well so I hope you have fun and we'll just start up in a second or two and we'll get started we'll do a drawing first pencil drawing and then we'll uh, start painting Good morning, good evening, good afternoon everyone. Welcome, come on in. We're doing some beautiful watercolors here. We're going to do a really simple um, sepia tone watercolor. We're going to kind of get into the um, idea of tonal values. Tonal values are critical in your watercolors, darks and lights. So in this video we're going to use just one simple uh, paint sepia paint. This is a Windsor Newton. I use this all the time. It's a basically like a, a brownish um, paint. Looks great. I do figures with it. Let's try it out here. Let's do a little farm scene. So first thing we'll do is we'll do a, a light sketch, preliminary sketch, to uh, get things laid out on our paper. And this is like an 8 by 10 and we're going to go with maybe about a quarter of the way up. We're going to go with our, uh, let's say we call that our um, hill. So our hill is going to be one quarter of the way up the paper. And then maybe our farmhouse roof is going to be halfway up the paper roof. And that should be good. We have the roof height, the hill, and that's all we need. And we could also say that our um, house, our farmhouse, is going to be halfway, center line, center of the page, 
over this way is going to be our farmhouse. Farmhouse here. So we just know we're going to start our farmhouse here at the center line and go this way. Like that. No worries. Um, we're going to be painting into the light on this one. So here, we're painting into the light. So our light is straight ahead of us, like this. So there's our hash marks. Center line over this way, farmhouse, hill, over here on this line here about a quarter of the way up from the bottom. And of course, as we start out here, you'll notice that we did put the finished painting in the beginning of the video. So this way you have the finished painting right in the beginning of the video. You can look at it, check it out. You can see it. You can work from that. You can also wait, watch, you know, watch full through the whole video and then go back to the beginning. And then also at the end of the painting, we'll stop and we'll focus in on the finished painting. So Either way you go, you're going to have the finished painting at the end or the beginning, and we're just going to work our way through. So you saw the finished painting right at the beginning now, and now we're going to keep going through. First thing we do is we do a preliminary sketch. Essentially, you're just going to lay out, like we did here, our uh, hash marks on our tape. So we taped around our watercolor paper. That's important. Let's get our watercolor paper with some tape around it, some some decent uh, uh, artist tape around our, our watercolor paper. This is Fabriano paper I'm using right now. Fabriano Artistico extra white paper. So let's start out. I'll just go straight across with a nice level line. That's going to be our hill in the distance here. Then, we're going to say here is our center line of the rectangle that we're working within. Center line is going to be our farmhouse. So we're going to start our farmhouse here and then work to the left, this way. So, let's go this way. Lightly, I'm sketching here. And that's pretty close. The top roof and the bottom roof have the same level for the eaves of the roof. Tops of the roof are a little different. This one's a little higher. Hope you can see this while you're watching. If not, we're going to go over this a second time. I'm just doing a preliminary sketch right now just to lay out what I see here as I go. Then this is another portion of the uh, building. This could be the uh, an extension or an addition on the farmhouse. Then we have some hills over here. Then we have a beautiful, large, gorgeous tree over here. So we're just going to do that. It kind of touches the farmhouse a little bit over here. It's kind of a squarish look. It goes up and it goes a little higher than the rooftops, about this much. And then over here, let's get a ruler just to make this a little more accurate. This is a windmill over here. So I'm going to make the windmill like this. Okay, and then the windmill's here. And then we're just going to go around. Okay, that's our windmill. And if you see your windmill's a little bit uh, don't 
don't worry, don't suffer over the very much, the, don't suffer over the details, just, you know, get things in somewhat close. And we have a little chimney over here. And then over here we have the We have the uh, farmhouse here. There's some. Always remember, have fun with this. So I'm just going to go. And there's another tree over here, but this is in the distance. This tree is far away over here. Like that. Then another tree, another smaller tree over here. This one might be a little, a little closer to us. Then we have a um, road. Like that. Like that. And we have a carriage, a horse and carriage. We're in the Pennsylvania, Lancaster, Pennsylvania countryside here. There's some carriages, horse and carriages. So that, that's the horse and carriage here on the road. Beautiful uh, countryside here, farmlands. Sometimes I'll make a little bit of a... I'll try to exaggerate a little bit. Try to make this a little wider here. Okay, and then we have a fence. Like that. And this fence, we're just going to leave these little posts of the fence here. We're going to leave those white paper. And then we're just going to have some parallel lines across here. We'll paint this in as we go. And here we have some stone walls on this side. And that's about the perfect drawing we have. We'll do some And we're going to do our windows. Now remember as you go here, remember as you go here to have fun. Okay. Have fun as you go here. We're doing a sepia tone painting, which means all just the brownish, dark brown paint. And we just use that to create our painting, darks and lights. And you'll work from my finished painting in the beginning or the end, however you like to do that. water. Okay, so I'm going to take a quick break. Again, I always say, please, if you like, subscribe. This channel, we do everything watercolors, 
Every week we're doing something in the watercolor medium. It could be flower paintings, seascapes, landscapes, street scenes, figure work, flowers, whatever it is. Everything is watercolor, so please check in. If you subscribe down below on the right hand side, you'll see that red subscribe button, hit that. There's a little bell icon, hit the bell notifications, all notifications. This way you're always getting notified when our videos come out once a week or so. Usually it's every, you know, every week at least, every, once a week, sometimes twice a week we do videos. And uh, you'll get the information, you'll be able to watch it, learn from it, you'll get all critical methods and techniques in watercolor, and then, uh, you know, work along with us if you feel like you really enjoy this type of painting. If you want to wait till the next week to find something else you like, that's fine too, but at least watch everything full through because you're going to learn all about the techniques of watercolor each week you're here on my channel. That's the main thing. Your watercolors will get absolutely better as you watch each video each week on this channel. You're going to see the techniques, the methods, over and over, over and over again. You'll see those techniques, those methods, the ideas, the philosophies of how we create watercolor paintings. Your watercolors are going to get better. You're going to be happier. As an artist, you want to get your paintings looking better all the time. You'll be happier, you'll be excited about your medium, your watercolor medium, and you'll have a lot of fun. All right, so let's come right back. Let's take a quick break, um, and then we'll just get, we'll get right into the painting now. We have our drawing completed, and we'll start with our painting. All right, we are back here. We're in action. We're going to do some beautiful sepia tone. The beauty of this, using just sepia tone by itself with no other colors at all, you can really pick up a lot of interesting uh, detail and the actual tonal value of pictures and paintings and scenes, no matter what you're working from, whether it's photographs, um, plein air painting, if you're working from books, maybe you have some books that you like to work from, paintings uh, from books that you might have, watercolor books and so forth. Um, if you use sepia tone, it's a beautiful way just to capture the real dark and light of a painting. So I found a really beautiful um, uh, country scene. It's a beautiful uh, landscape type country scene. Let's get into it. You're going to work from either the beginning of my video. We're going to show at the start of this video, of course, you're going to see the finished painting. And then as we work towards the completion of this video, you'll see the uh, finished painting, and you can work from that too. Same thing, either or. Or you can just work as you go along and pause the video as you go. So let's uh, start out. We're going to notice that the roofs are the darkest darks, so we're going to go with straight sepia paint and just a damp brush, really. That's all you need is a damp brush, and that's all, and the sepia paint. I'm using Windsor & Newton sepia paint and I'm just gonna the light is coming from in front of us we're painting into the light so we're looking into the sunlight so if you were out on the scene here in plain air painting you know you'd, you'd have a little bit of a challenging time because you're looking into the sunlight you might need sunglasses as you're painting this scene um, so that's the key idea, is you're painting into the light. So this is going to be interesting because we're painting into that sunlight. This might be an early morning scene or a sunset. But we're not going to see any colors, really. We're just doing the darks and the lights. And we're just going right through here. There's the other roof over here all completely dark darks over here on these roofs so I just dip in and get a little a little bit of moisture on the brush but essentially it's straight paint you don't want to be using any amount of water other than just a damp brush on this so a damp brush is all you need and that's all and then you just go straight into the paint And then I'm going to go and I'm going to quickly grab my uh, apron and then this way I can use my apron to dry off my brush as I work a little bit.
Okay, so I'm back. I just ran across the other side of the studio here and I grabbed my apron as so I'm putting my apron on. So I like to use my apron as you can see here. I have my apron. I wear this white apron here or a black one. I have two. I have a white and a black apron and I just uh, tap off my brush on my apron to dry off the water. You can also use um, some tissues. So sometimes when you're working you can rinse your brush off, tap a little water off your brush once you rinse your brush in your water bucket and then you go into your your paint in your palette and that's all that's really just all you have to do and then we'll just continue on here we're going to do the windows and this is really fun because just think about it you're really we're just uh, creating darks and lights here These windows are right up underneath the roof eaves, so you'll see, you paint that right into the roof. Like so. This is uh, again another roof, shingles, dark shingles, so this building has some dark, probably black, black shingles on these roofs here. So. They're looking pretty dark, so let's capture that as we go across here. And we're having fun the whole time here, just enjoying looking at the photograph that we're looking at, painting as we go. So I'm using just a number five Da Vinci Maestro watercolor brush. It's a round watercolor brush, a good point, as you can see. Small brush and uh, some sepia paint. That's all. Windsor & Newton sepia paint. Nothing too fancy. I use uh, sepia paint all the time. I do watercolor figures, portraits. I love doing portraits with sepia paint because I can just do the lights and shadows of the portraits of let's say you know different figures and different things like that. So this works out good but you can do landscapes. Any type of paintings really work. Um, if, you're using the, if you're using the sepia tone you're really capturing the darks and the lights of the scene. That's all. And uh, okay. And uh, we have some windows here too. And I take my time. Now, as we sometimes you'll notice some not quite as dark, sometimes it's like a middle tone. So you carefully look at your uh, your photograph, see what you see. Notice if you do see darker darks, lighter lights, middle tones. Here I see another roof over here, very dark. And this seems to be very dark over here too. I might go a little lighter than I see. Sometimes you can adjust things if you think you want to. Okay, then we have some... Again, all I'm using is that sepia tone paint. I'm going to do a little splashing over here. I'm going to take this, make a little bit of a, a wetter wash over here, take some of that sepia paint over here, make it like a medium tone wash, and I'm going to splash. That's going to be for the trees. And then, since these trees are a little bit There's very darks over here on this tree. So this is like a very large tree over here, a huge tree. And then as you go up higher into the tree, it gets a little bit lighter. 
So therefore I'll do some finger painting, tapping on with my fingers, just so we have a little variation. Just like that. And that is really all you need. And then this goes down. So this is the tree. Just like that. And you can see how we... We can... Uh, there we go. And we're creating some parallel lines here, just like that. We're having a pretty dark line along the bottom of the house, this farmhouse. There's a little couple of uh, basement windows here, like that. And just carefully look at your carefully look at your uh, subject matter, your photograph. Okay, we have that little bit of tree over there. And then here we have another tree. So I'm going to just do some circular motions from this tree over here, like that. And it's pretty dark on the bottom of the tree, so there's thicker brush and leaves on the bottom of the tree. And then as it gets up higher, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit less dense as we go. So. Let's do that. And there's maybe some lines here. There's a fence. So sometimes you just have some fun. If you see a fence or something as you go, or some details, just try to kind of blend it in and do it the way you think it might look good. And don't worry about if it's dark or light. If I do these dark fence posts, they look fine, even though it might be looking like it's light or white in the uh, actual photograph. You can actually draw darks in or paint in darks with these lines of the fence. Again, it doesn't always have to be uh, doesn't always have to be uh, exact and you can change things around you're the artist you can you can change things around to make it look good so there we have that that's the uh, porch area and there's a touch of tone on the building here so I'm going to do that I'm going to put some tone here you can see on the building. This is a medium tone. And again, the sunlight's behind us, or the, actually the sunlight's in front of us, coming this way. This, the brightness of the light is coming this way. So this is all in shadow, all this side of the building here, this house, this farmhouse. So we're looking at this farmhouse. This is all in shadow, all the trees are in shadow, the fields here are also uh, in shadow a little bit. But this is the beauty of using the sepia tone. You're just doing darks and lights, so you're learning about um, darks and lights as you go. So I'm doing some darks and lights. This area of the house is a little darker over here. It's set back a little bit. If you can imagine this portion of this farmhouse is closer to us and then this section of this farmhouse over here, this other side of the farmhouse is a little bit further back so it 
the building is here and then it goes back a little bit so there's like a little bit of a the um, the farmhouse actually has a little bit of a uh, a change in it where it goes back further so there's a little wall on this side over here you really can't see it but in my photograph I'm looking at it's darker over here which tells me that's what's happening there's a little bit of a a return wall as they would call it in architecture which is returning back this way so it's going this way and then back so this this section of the farmhouse is actually further away from us and this is closer to us here so you can see how that kind of you can create that illusion of depth there and we can lift up if you have a little issue or anything like that where you have too much paint and there's some bushes over here so I put those there This is all pretty dark here. This goes across. There we go. And I just try to work around these posts over here so we have some posts that are light. They're just pretty much white posts, fence posts. So we try to paint around those. There we go. And you just carefully go at, you know, along. And I'm just trying to make sure I leave those lights for the fence posts. And this is where you practice your brushwork. Try to use some exercises once in a while to practice uh, your brushwork. So that when you go in to do a painting like this where you're doing some uh, fine brushwork, you know, you have it. You feel comfortable, you can just really zip along and do your your brushwork and you don't have to worry about you can just handle it and it's no problem. So here you'll see I just color, you know, paint in this front, front section here, this most this is the foreground right here we're doing. Um, this is the dark darks here. I'm getting some straight paint there. There is some darks here like that in the field, so let me get those in.
and I think that looks pretty good. Okay. Then we're going to do some Pretty dark dark there like that so that's really straight paint straight sepia paint here and then close to very dark over here too as well and then these are stone walls here so we just have some hit and miss. Hit and miss uh, tonal values here, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then these are this is the road. And we're just gonna zip our our road lines in like this. And there's some darker darks there, so you want to try to capture the uh, then this is straight darks here. Okay, that's the uh, carriage, the, the horse and carriage up here at the top of the hill. Looks good. Okay, look at that, how beautiful that looks. The darks and the lights. With the sepia tone, you really can get a great look with your watercolors by using just one tonal value here. And let's do our windmill. Here, your windmill, you want to be really Careful, let's use a needlepoint brush to get some fine details in here. We have our needlepoint brush. We use this all the time with our watercolors. It's got a beautiful needle, very fine point there. So we'll just get our darks in here. There we go. Load it up with a little bit of dark darks there. Really dark though, you don't want to go too light. You want to go plenty of dark paint there. Get your uh, needlepoint brush loaded up with. Then if you have to, you tap off a little bit of paint off your needlepoint brush so you don't have too much excessive paint on there. And then you can do your, uh, you can do your uh, windmill here. So we're just going to do our windmill. And you'll see I'll just go up and do a careful line like that. Like that. That's that's all. Some X's here. Like that. And then the most important part, the super super dark darks with the sepia tone paint. Get your brush and load it up with just the straight paint with just a touch of water. And we're going to do our first start out with a cross. Like that, start out with a cross. And then and 
and then just fan out that cross like that. And that's all. And then you can even do a little bit of a round touch of roundness to it with a little bit of just so that and I'm going to do a couple splashes and you can lift up your splashes too if you don't think you like the splashing no problem you lift it up like that and, and then that's all now this white paper needs a little bit of tone, a little bit of a sepia tone. Not a tremendous amount, but it, it does need some. So we're going to add in some of that. Let's use a larger brush, number 8. Round brush, uh, a Raphael watercolor round brush. Let's get a little bit of that in there. So we're already at tw we're already working 20 minutes now. Let's take a break. Let's take a break quickly, and then we'll come back. We'll do our sky wash, and that's better off because we want to let this dry here. We just did this. We just did this windmill. Let's let that windmill dry that paint there, and then uh, also too we just did some of the trees over here. So um, let's let this dry just a touch, maybe 15 minutes. Let this dry 20 minutes. And then we'll come back and we'll do our last little bit of sky wash to get a little bit of tone on the paper. Uh, because this is really just white paper right now. So let's get some tone on there just a little bit. And then we'll be finished. And we'll have a beautiful sepia tone landscape painting. A beautiful farm scene here as we're doing. You're going to really enjoy this. It's fun. It's simple. And it gives you that really focus. That strong focus on darks and lights in your paintings. Because you really have to... When you're working with all your colors, sometimes it gets a little challenging to figure out your darks and your lights when you're working with all different colors. But if you just use one color or sepia tone, you'll notice that you get really zoned in on your tonal values, your darks and your lights. So let's remember that. If you practice with this a little bit here and there, it'll make you even more focused when you're doing your ordinary paintings with all of your colors to focus in on those darks and lights and make sure that you're capturing that in your watercolor paintings. Okay, we'll be right back. Just a second. All right, you're still in it. You're still in the game here. We're finishing up our watercolor in just sepia tone. So remember, we, we were just wor you working with sepia tone. Windsor Newton sepia tone paint. I use it all the time. It helps me to focus in on the darks and lights of my watercolor paintings, and I hope you'll try this out. Use this occasionally. Try a little exercise here and there with just sepia tone paint. Nothing but one paint sepia tone. Here you can see we did beautiful darks and lights of a beautiful farm scene. This is a farmhouse in the beautiful countryside of Pennsylvania, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, close to where I live. I have lots of fun there. I go there all the time. Every year I go there, at least once or twice a year, and we have a great time. So on vacation, let's get back into this here. Let's finish up here and have a wonderful light wash of sepia tone paint for our sky wash. And what I'm going to do is we're, we're painting into the light. So the light is in front of us. It's facing us, the sunlight. So that being as it is, we we just add a little bit of tone as you can see here. And then what you can do is you can kind of make a little bit of a um, I, I would say like a little bit of a uh, like a spotlight in the middle of your painting if you want. So you put your tone on your paper like this and then maybe you you leave you leave things dark and light as you want. So here I'll leave it
I'm making it a little bit lighter around the the roofs here. So to me, I feel like it looks a little better with a little bit darker up here. So you can enhance the, the light of your painting here by making it a touch darker up around here. Just a little bit though, not too much. And then you can sometimes dab up a little bit of paint. There we go. Around that tree might look a little good if we dab up a little paint there. And again, we're painting into the light, so the, the sky is quite bright. So I'm not going to... Um, and I keep my tissue handy and I just blot up here and there. And I add some water over here and then I just blot up a little bit. Essentially I don't really want too much white paper. I think I'd rather have a little bit of tone on everything. Maybe these fences over here, these fence posts might be a little bit straight white paper, but that looks pretty good. And we were just remember we're putting tone on all of the paper really. The only place I left a little bit of straight white paper is maybe on the fence post here, just a little bit. But I think actually everything does have a little bit of tone on it. So there's no white paper at all uh, actually on this. But you have to carefully go as you work. And then here we'll do a little bit of darker darks over here on this side of the house. Like over here, like there's some darks over here. So I did a little more darks over here. And a little bit of mystery in your paintings are, is okay too. But I think that's really looking good. I hope you're going to try this uh, at home. Again, um, please subs you know subscribe. Feel free to subscribe to my channel. We're doing watercolors every week. Week after week, week after week, month after month, year after year, we're doing watercolors here. Tune in each week if you hit that subscribe button below, right there on the right hand side, below this video, and you hit the notification bell too. There's a little bell sign there, a little insignia of a bell. You click on the bell notification, uh, to this way you're alerted each time our video comes out, you can watch it. If you want to jump in and do some work on it, you do some work on it. You might do the whole thing, you might do some parts. So you don't necessarily have to do the uh, whole painting every time. You can do some parts to the painting uh, of whatever we're working on at that time. You know, sometimes you have, you're have you busy and you have things to do and you can't always um, make time to do the whole painting, but you can try little por portions of it. So try little portions of the painting sometimes if, if you can. So even if you can't do the whole painting, 
try a couple portions of it, a little spot here or there, you know, and this way you're uh, you're always progressing in your watercolors and getting better and better. And that's why I'm here. I want you to get better and better at your watercolors. I want you to be very happy with your paintings. Um, let's peel this uh, off here and we'll take a look at the painting a little closer like this. If you're painting better paintings, you're happier, you're going to paint more, you're going to draw more, you're going to have more fun. So as long as you keep tuning in every week, following along what we're doing, even if you're not painting and drawing what we're doing, you're watching, you're learning then. So that's the key. Knowledge is power, so the more knowledge you have, the more power you're going to have when you're doing your watercolors. And we're going to just zoom in a little bit here. And you can see how beautiful that looks. We're just focusing in on the darks and the lights. And then if you practice this here and there, once in a while, you do some sepia tone, you'll be more aware of it when you're using your just normal everyday palette with all of your colors. So I hope you're having fun. And we'll see you on the next video. Happy painting, everyone. Thanks again for tuning in each week here. And uh, we'll uh, catch you on the next video. Okay, bye-bye.